Do you have a sales funnel strategy? Well, that's what we're talking about today. And we are answering the big question, what is a sales funnel and how does it work? Before we dive right in, please go ahead and subscribe to Pin Traffic Power right here on YouTube. And then hit that notification bell so that you can be alerted every time there is a new video created and uploaded. So let's talk about sales funnels. And especially today, we're interested in talking about how to move your Pinterest your Pinterest traffic in a more effective way so that it can really work for you for your longevity of your business. So what is a sales funnel and how does it work? Well, we have all of this traffic that is coming your direction, okay? If you are working very, very hard at bringing in your Pinterest traffic, both organic and paid, and I would definitely start with the organic first to build a very solid foundation that will be with you for much, much longer than what paid traffic will be, you need to do something with that traffic. And here's why. Because the majority of people who look at your products from Pinterest, everything that you have to offer, they're not ready to buy today. They are not ready to buy today. So this is especially important for you if you are in e-commerce. This is important if you are using Pinterest to uh, offer your services, or maybe you are selling some courses, some digital products. So if you are doing digital products, physical products, or services, tune in on this one because the statistics are out that very, very small percentage, about 3%, actually will make a purchase from you the very first time that they see what you have to offer. However, 47%, which is even bigger, that's half of the, your traffic, will buy later. These were statistics that were put out by Shopify. You can go and look those up. But the important part of this is an understanding of most people just will not buy your products or your services the first time that they see them. And this is traffic. These are your visitors coming from Pinterest right to your store, your website, your blog, uh, straight to your products and everything that you are offering. So what would be a better idea is to take that traffic and move it through a sales funnel. And what you do is offer something for free in exchange for their email address. Okay, so this could be an email opt-in is oftentimes what that's called. And you're going to offer something to give away for free in exchange, they are more than happy to sign up on your email list. Now, through a series of emails, you move them through your funnel where they can get to know you, they can get to know your brand, you can build a strong rapport and a great relationship with your audience because you have grabbed them and you're able to stay in communication with them instead of letting them bounce right off of your site and you may never see them again. So this is the best way to stay in contact with your people who are interested. And you know that they're interested because they did click through your pin to go over to see what you have to offer. They're curious, they wanna know more. So give them a chance, give them a chance, give them something more, and you need to give them something for free that is valuable in their eyes in order to have them hang around, you need to give. You need to give and give and give before you can receive and ask for a sale. So in your series of emails, you can then offer something at a lower price. So your traffic is coming in and they're gonna move down your funnel. That's what this cone shape is. They enter their email in, they're gonna to go to another offer later on through your series of emails, which I would recommend making at a very low price. It's gonna, the price range will depend on your brand and the types of products that you offer. But something that is affordable, something that is less risky for your customers because they just wanna try something. They just wanna try it out. If they're happy, they will move on down to your higher offer. So you can have a series of offers at different price points and gradually they become more expensive. Now, not everyone is going to end up moving down all the way to your highest offers. That's perfectly normal and that's okay. After they've experienced everything that you have to offer, they will make a decision if they wanna continue moving through the entire journey. And most people will not make it up to the highest offer. However, you will still make a lot of money along the way because you are able to get repeat sales from the same customer. 
So rather than focus on trying to get one sale from a complete stranger, it would be much more effective for you to offer something for free, stay in communication with them, build a great relationship with them with good rapport and move them into your other offers, starting with something very affordable. And then you can offer something later. If they've had a great experience, offer something later at a higher offer. Now, all of these offers do need to be related to each other. You don't want them to be random and something that has no, um, correlation with each other. So make sure that your offers really do relate and they are compatible with each other. So let's answer this question. What is the purpose of a sales funnel? Well, the purpose is this, to make more money, to get repeat customers, to build relationships, to have people that become loyal fans and loyal customers for life. And they're, they're always there, right? So it's a lot easier for you to get more sales from happy customers than it is for you to try and go and find some complete strangers to just buy from you even one time. So this is what you need to do. You need to go where your audience is. And today we're talking about Pinterest because for almost everyone out there, there is a big audience on Pinterest that is interested in your brand and in your niche area. You just need to know how to tap into that audience and use their language. When you do that, you're going to start driving that traffic towards your free offer that is displayed in your email opt-in box for your landing page. They're going to enter into your email and you're giving them something valuable. You're going to give them something away for free, or maybe it's a discount promo code to something that's in your store, but make it very valuable, not like a small percentage discount, but a hefty percentage discount, something where they say, wow, that's very generous of you. I think I'll take you up on that offer so that they can have their first experience. And then you wanna make sure that that first experience is a really good experience. So by offering something for free, or maybe it's a coupon code discount, something that is valuable to them, you're gonna capture them onto your email list with this valuable free offer or something that is considered valuable in their eyes, which could be a discount, it could be a free, you're gonna give away something for free, which could be a physical product or a digital product. If you do a physical product, make sure that is uh, an offer that is free plus shipping so that they do have to pay for the shipping costs. It's a very common and popular offer to make. And then later on, you can connect that to something else that is related to your first offer with another physical product. It is difficult to do a physical product and then offer a um, digital product right afterwards with the exception of books. So if you are an author and you wrote a book and published it, you can do that if your next offer is a digital product such as a course where the course is gonna give you even more information. So because your book is really um, an information product that is a physical book, that is an information product, it's much easier for you then to offer a digital product next, which is going to be a course that you've created that really enhances the book and, and helps that person with even more information to take further steps along in their journey with you. So if you are in the uh, digital space, you have digital products, it's a lot easier for you to offer some free things and then you can offer more digital products along the way that are more expensive. If you are offering a discount promo code, you may want to give them a very steep discount promo code first and then in your next offer, it might be wise to show them one of your products that is at a very cheap price that is not that, um, it's not shown to the public. It's only this one-time offer where it is very affordable and it could be, again, a physical product or a digital product, but this is especially useful if you have a store, an e-commerce store, and you wanna know what, can, what else can I do? Well, you could offer them a physical product that is very affordable and you could choose one that is one of your best sellers. It is definitely a product that you know people love to buy and for this one time, they can get it at a special discount and a lot of people will appreciate that. Uh, that may be why they're there and they're hanging out. And you would be able to get those people happy 
And the more that you give them something valuable that they want that keeps them happy, they're going to be a repeat customer and come back again and again. But more importantly, you're able to sell them higher priced items throughout your complete journey through your email list with your sales series that you can write up. So after you've captured those people and give them something valuable that you are offering them onto your email list, you can build relationships and it makes it so much easier to do by giving them um, exactly what they want, what they're looking for. And by doing this, you're able to make a lot more consistent income because you're going to have these repeat sales that are offered periodically throughout your entire email series. So what is an effective sales funnel? Well, number one, it's evergreen. It's not based on a season. It's something that you can do all year long. That's what I would build first. Yes, you can definitely build some seasonal sales funnels, but you're only gonna be able to make those sales during that time of year. So I would not make that my first sales funnel that I would put together. That would be something that is considered extra and develop all of your evergreen sales funnels first. Later, you can capture people who are wanting something that is more seasonal based on holidays or events, things that are for just a certain part of the year, and that could bring in an extra boost of income down the road as well. What also makes an effective sales funnel is it's a series of gradual offers, okay? So if you uh, walk into a brick and mortar store and you are there for the first time as a visitor, you have a sales associate who will come up to you and ask you uh, what you would be interested in or what are you looking for today? So you tell them, but they're not going to go and find the highest priced product in the store that is what you're looking for. They're going to give you something at a lower price so that you can uh, capture them by just having them buy something and they're going to be able to have a great experience with it. Now that so sales associate knows that they're not going to come in and buy the highest priced item in the store because this is their first time walking into the store, but they will buy something at a lower price and they'll be able to take it home and try it. If they love it, they will be back in that store again. Okay. So that's how you see a sales funnel happen in real life with a brick and mortar store. And we're basically doing the same thing for our online businesses. So a lot of e-commerce businesses are missing this. They do not have a sales funnel in place and they don't even have a way of capturing people onto their email list. And you're really missing out because that is how you're gonna get these repeat sales and repeat customers, which is gonna bring in about two to three times more income to your bottom line with the same exact amount of traffic. This is why this is important, is that you really don't have a problem with your traffic and you may not have problems with, with conversions, but you do have a problem with trying to uh, build relationships with, with people where you can offer them something later on when they're actually ready to buy and not try to force things on them before they're ready. They've got to get to know your brand. They need to get familiar with your products your services, and everything that you have to offer. You're also going to provide solutions. See where you can provide solutions for people. What is your best sellers and why? Provide solutions that solve real problems for people. And that is easy, easy, easy to sell those types of products or services all day long. Make sure that it is considered valuable to your audience. All of your offerings are considered valuable and that they are at price points where you are really giving them huge value. And this is their first experiences with your brand and with your business. So give them high, high value. Later on, you don't have to uh, worry about that so much because you've already developed trust. You've already developed a relationship and in return, they are becoming more and more loyal for, to you and they know your brand and they associate your brand with trust, with high value, so that no matter what you present to them in the future, they are more likely to buy and they will continue buying from you over and over again. An effective sales funnel is also automated, meaning that you can set this up in your email service provider and those emails can be sent out automatically for you in a series. 
and you're always able to go in and edit those emails, adjust them and tweak them to make them better and better, to know exactly what works, and then capitalize on that over and over again. Why do you need to do all of this? Really the goal here is for repeat sales. It's a lot better. It's, you're gonna have more consistent income if you can get those repeat sales instead of trying to worry about getting one sale from one complete stranger why not go out there find people bring them in and say look i've got something that i want to give to you for free because i just appreciate you thank you for stopping in thank you for visiting i want to give you something for free and they will remember that they will remember that when you have your next offer giving them something to try to see if they'll be happy with it. Guess what? They're more likely you're going to have a higher conversion rate. You're going to make most of your sales right off of your email list. Probably 75% of your sales is going to come straight from your email list. A lot less of your sales are going to happen just from people shopping around with your products and buying straight inside of your store or off of your blog post or your website or wherever it is that you're sending people. Okay majority of your sales are going to be in your email list. And what's nice is that a good portion of those will be repeat sales from the same exact customer rather than trying to capture these one-off sales that can be very, very difficult to get over and over again from complete strangers. So why not make a different strategy for yourself with your online sales and work on trying to build relationships with people when that you start driving that traffic in, you're really working hard at it capture them, do something with that traffic, give them value right up front. And the more value that you give people up front, the more sales you get. I hope that helps. And I'll see you again next time.